Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Kate McCrill. I'm a PhD candidate in health psychology from the Faculty of Medical and Health Sciences. And today I'm talking about how media coverage of a drug switch can influence side effect reporting. But first, I'd like to clarify side effects. You see, side effects are not always due to the chemical components of the drug. They can also be induced through psychological processes. When a person expects to get side effects, this increases their bodily awareness. They start to notice various physical sensations and then misattribute benign transient symptoms to a drug. So this phenomenon was first demonstrated in randomized control drug trials where the placebo group also reported side effects after taking an inert tablet. This response has become known as the nocebo effect. And research has shown that the media can influence people's expectations about the experience and likelihood of side effects. For example, there's been quite a lot of media coverage on statins and their apparent association with muscle pain. <coughs> But in randomized controlled trials of statin therapy, when participants are blinded to treatment group, they don't report muscle pain. But as soon as they're told they were in statin group, there's a sudden increase in muscle-related side effects. So with this in mind, I want to talk about the New Zealand venlafaxine brand switch. So venlafaxine is a last-line antidepressant for treatment-resistant depression. There are currently 45,000 New Zealanders taking venlafaxine. And for the past three years, Pharmac has funded two types of this medication. There's a Fexor, Pfizer's original branded version, and a generic called arovenlafaxine. But in 2017, through a competitive tender process, the funded brand was changed to another generic, Enlafax, made by Mylan. The aim of the switch was to save $19 million over five years, and these savings would be used to fund other medicines. So these three drugs all contain the active ingredient venlafaxine, and have been approved by MedSafe as being bioequivalent, meaning they have the same efficacy, safety, and side effects. So the only difference with Enlafax compared to the other two that it has a different name and it's made by a different company. So one could assume that this would have been a relatively simple switch. But people with depression could be considered a more vulnerable group. As research has shown, they're more susceptible to the nocebo effect. And following the venlafaxine switch, some people did have an adverse response and this was picked up by the media. On February 28 this year, both the New Zealand Herald and Stuff Online released an article which discussed in detail the specific experience of two patients. The New Zealand Herald also listed the side effects that had been reported following the switch to Enlafax. Most notably that this drug wasn't working and there was an increase in suicidal thoughts. A few months later, Stuff released another article which continued this discussion about people's negative experiences with Enlafax. So my colleagues and I conducted a study to examine the effect of this media coverage on people's side effect reports. And the best way to do that was to look at reports to the Centre for Adverse Reactions Monitoring, or CALM, a New Zealand database that records side effect complaints. We also investigated whether the side effects mentioned in the media increased in frequency compared to side effects that weren't mentioned. So to investigate these aims, we analysed the monthly adverse reaction reports for Enlafax from October 2017 through to July 2018. Our data of interest were the number of decreased therapeutic response reports. This is another way of saying the drugs doesn't work. Uh, we also investigated the total number of side effects reported each month and the number of times the media mentioned side effects were reported and five equally common side effects not mentioned in the media. 
And since the media coverage was released at the end of February and April, we compared the March and May averages for these outcomes with their pre-media monthly average using an interrupted time series analysis. So there were 100 adverse event reports in this time. 70% of reporters were female and the average age was 44. So what did we find? Well, there was a sudden increase in adverse event reporting in the months directly after the media coverage. There was a significant increase in the reports of decreased therapeutic response, with an interruption effect of 15.49, meaning the difference between the pre-media average and the March and May average. The number of side effects reported also increased, going from an average of seven per month before the media focus to 65 in March and 33 in May. And when looking at the specific side effects mentioned in the media, all apart from fatigue and anxiety significantly increased, but the greatest change was for suicidal thoughts. However, there was very little change in the side effects not mentioned in the media. Only dizziness seemed to have a slight increase. So from these results, we can see that the media coverage of the venlafaxine brand switch was associated with a large increase in side effects and reports of decreased therapeutic response. And ultimately, the side effects mentioned in the media increased more than side effects that weren't mentioned. These results show the nocebo effect in action and how the media can influence people's expectations about the experience of side effects from this drug, despite it being bioequivalent to their previous medication. However, it should be noted that this is a snapshot of adverse event reporting. These are the people who voluntarily reported to CALM. So these results probably don't capture the full extent of the nocebo effect. And we also don't know the outcomes or the consequences of these adverse event reports. But from the study, we can see that the nocebo effect can be transmitted to a wide range of people very quickly and very easily through the media. We know from past research that the nocebo effect is associated with non-adherence to medical treatment. So that is a likely consequence in this case, keeping in mind that this is an antidepressant. And as we saw in the results, the side effect that increased the most was suicidal thoughts, which is extremely concerning. So what can be done? Well, I'll leave you with two thoughts. Firstly, from the media side of things, there needs to be more balanced reporting. In the venlafaxine case, the media focused on two patients out of 45,000. So it's probably necessary to acknowledge that not everyone has or will experience these side effects. We could also educate the public about the nocebo effect. See, people know a lot about placebo, but nocebo is relatively unknown. We could use the media to spread information given its wide reach. And finally, to us, this may have seemed like a simple medicine switch. But some people, particularly those with depression, are more sensitive to medicine changes and need greater support managing this process. The support should have come from their healthcare professionals, their doctors, pharmacists, the gatekeepers of the medication, and not the media. Thank you.